All right, getting started with the DS5504, we need to determine if we're getting a passport book, a passport card, or both. I've made a video about the difference. Let's just assume we're getting a passport book. We'll put an X into this box right here. So it looks like that. And make sure you're only using black ink. They won't accept any other color on these application forms. Now, if we're getting ourselves a passport book, they're gonna wanna know if we want a regular book or a large book. Now, the large book has a lot more pages in it and it doesn't cost anything extra, so why not get it, especially if we're frequent travelers? And you just put a little X in the box like that. Now moving down to our name here, we're going to list our current name and if we've had any name changes, then we're going to have to make sure that we submit proof of that name change if it resulted from like a marriage or a legal name change, like um, if you have a divorce decree or a court order or something like that, they're going to want that proof. So here, let's say that our last name is person and we're going to write this one letter per box and when we do this box forms like this, I like to write in capital letters just for clarity. And let's say that our first name is Reed. Again, same format, one letter per box, capital letters. And make sure you do not skip your middle name. They want the full middle name here. There we go. Our name is Real Human Person. And when were we born? Let's say we were born on June the 4th, 1993. Here we're going to want to write that, and we want to write the dates in the month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format. Now here we select our gender. We have male, female, or a recent change that they've made to the application is gender X. And if you're going to be changing to gender X, meaning you don't identify as male or female, make sure you mark this box as well to indicate that you are changing your gender marker. So let's say we did change. We would mark an X right here, and let's say we switched over to a female like that. Now they want to include the place that we were born. If we were born inside the United States, they want the city and the the state name. If we were born outside the United States, they want the city and the country. So for example, my daughter was born in Hong Kong, China. Here I would write Hong Kong, China, one letter per box. But let's say I was born in Cityville, and here you can include the two letter or the full name of the state. You can see I've used up all the boxes here. That's okay, they'll understand that this says Pennsylvania. Here we include our social security number. Make sure we include it in the nine digit format with one number per box. Now in the email section right here, you don't have to include this, but if you do, it gives the government the option to send you emails based on the status of your application. So I encourage you to include it. It doesn't have to be written in big blocky letters. Just make sure that it is clear and legible. Email at email.com. Your primary contact phone number can be a cell phone, home phone, work phone. It doesn't really matter. It's just they want to know what's the best way to get a hold of you. And if you do make it your cell phone, then they can send you text messages as well. One number per box. Now here we have our mailing address. This could be the place that we actually live and we get our mail, or it could be a PO box, or it could be a URB. Make sure we write it in the same format with one letter per box. And don't worry if I'm actually hitting my boxes properly, my printer's kind of pale and I can't really see the lines all the time. And see how I write out the word street. Now down here in address two, maybe you live in an apartment, you could write apartment number four or a suite or something like that. But it could also be that you get your mail sent to someone else who lives at this address. In that case, you will write in care of their name. And for address line two here, if the applicant is a minor child, you must include the in care of for the parent or the adult registered to receive the mail at this address. But I'm just going to say apartment three. And now the way I've written this, I've messed up. These are small letters and I didn't get them in the boxes here. My printer is kind of pale and I couldn't really see them. So what I would do is I would just start over on a new application because right now what I'm going to do is cross that off. I didn't write that really well and I'm going to write apartment three here. But if you do something like this, don't just cross it off. They don't want a big sloppy piece of paper. They want you to start over and get a new sheet. So let's just assume I didn't make that mistake over there and we're just going to write apartment three in the format that it should be written in. Again, the boxes are hard to see on mine because of the printer, but the city you should write in the same way as you wrote it up here. Cityville, P, and again, I made another mistake right here. You don't want to write the state inside where it says city. So I'm going to, to just, so I'm going to just cross it off like that. But what I want you to do is start over entirely. If you make a mistake, include your state right there two letter format. Here they give you six boxes for a five digit zip code, just fill up five of them. And if your mailing address is outside the United States, make sure you write the country right here. If the country name is longer than the number of boxes, just write it as long as you can and they will understand given the beginning of it. 
So here in number nine, they want you to list all the other names that you have used. So this could be like your maiden name, if you've had any name changes, any previous married names. And on the sheet, they want you to enter up to two names right here. Now, if it's only been your last name that has changed, you only need to enter your last name. If you need more space to write additional names, they want you to attach additional sheet of paper. And let's make sure we write our name changes in the same format in these boxes that we wrote in up here as well. Now right here is where they want you to include your photo. I've actually created a video about how to do that precisely, so make sure you check that out if you need help. So here they want your most recent passport information. So let's say that you're using this application form because you had a, da a data error or you had some kind of correction in your name or something like that. You want to enter what's actually on your passport book or card right now, not what you want it to be in the future. And you're going to write that out in these individual boxes, same format that we've been doing here. Now for these ones down here, make sure you notice that you're looking at here is your passport book and here is your passport card. And again, don't make any marks on the paper like I'm doing here. Don't be like circling stuff and underlining things because they don't want a bunch of marks on your application like that. But just make sure you include one number per box for either your book or your card. If you have them both, include them both. And over here will be your issuance dates. So this is for your book and this is for your card. And this is when we are getting them issued, not when they are expired. So the date they were actually issued and write that in the month, month, slash day, day, slash year, 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 year format, just like we did up here. And then we come down here. If we're 16 or older, we're going to sign it and date it like so. If we are applying for a minor, we can just sign our name down here. And then we'll move on to page two. So on page two, we're repeating a lot of the same information that we've already included. Only here it can be a little bit less formal. We don't need to write it in big block letters and we don't need to write one letter per block anymore. So let's get started. So under name of applicant, we're writing last name, first name, middle name. So for us, that was person comma real human include the full middle name for your date of birth continue with the month month slash day day slash year 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 format and we said we were born in 06 04 1983 that would be june 4th 1983 for height feel free to do it in foot and inch format or in centimeter format let's just say that we are six foot six inches tall and what's our hair color we can write it very simple like that it is brown same thing for the eye color we can write it very simply blue now if the applicant is at least 16 years old you can include their application right here you might be an ice cream scooper you might be a teacher you might be a police officer write it here if you have an employer or if the applicant goes to school write the employers or the school name here if say you are self-employed you could write that self-employed now this section is only if applicable so you could just leave it blank in this section here we're going to have a chance to include some additional contact phone numbers so if we included our cell phone previously now we can include our home phone here if we want and our work phone here if we want we can do that by marking an X where it says home phone and then writing the phone number in the same nine digit format with a dash in between it 555-555-5555 and over here if we include our work we could do the exact same thing in the same format. Now here we have our permanent address. If our permanent address is the same as our mailing address on page one, well then we can just leave this blank. But if we've made something like a PO box or a URB, or if we have a different mailing address, then we have a permanent address. This is where we will include our permanent address. Make sure you do not list things like a PO box here. That is not considered a permanent address. And we can write that in a little bit more freehand. Let's say our permanent address is 622 Fake Road. And our apartment unit might be 74. And we're going to write the city right here, Fakeville. And we can include the state code here. So two letter code, let's say Michigan, M-I. And the zip code, this should be five digits, one, 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 one. One. In the next section, we're including our emergency contact. So this could be a friend, a relative, a parent, something like that. You're going to include their name, their address in case that they can't get a hold of them via phone or something like that, or they need to contact them personally, you can include a way to actually get a hold of them, including a PO box. And then you'll also include their phone number and how you are related to them. So let's say their name is True Person and they live at one, two, Weird Street. They don't have an apartment or unit number, so I'll leave it blank. They live in Pretendville, and that will be in the state of Pennsylvania. 
with a zip code of 000, five digit code for there. And make sure we include their phone number in the same way we've been including phone numbers in the rest of this, 10 digit codes with the dashes in between, 555-555-5555. And what is the relationship to us? Let's say that that is our dad. Now, do you have any travel plans coming up? If you don't, you can just write none, none, none. If you do have travel plans and you want your application to be expedited a little bit, then you can include the departure date here in the same format that we've been using of month, month, slash day, day, slash year, 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 year and then include the suspected return date and the countries you're going to be visiting. So let's say we're leaving June 8th, 2024, and we think we're coming back August 10th, 2024. Where are we going? We're going to Oman, Sweden, and Estonia. And you can just separate out the country names with a comma like that. And you can see here that it's fine to be a little less formal on this page. I wrote in capital letters here, lowercase letters here. It's not going to make too much of a difference as long as it is clear and legible. So down here, they want to know about any data corrections or changes that need to be made. So for example, they want to know here, has your name changed by marriage or court order less than one year after your US passport book and or card was issued? So let's say that you got a new passport book eight months ago and then two months later you get married and your name changes well this is where you're going to mark yes and if you're marking yes right here this will tell you that you now need to include your new name what is your new last name new first name new middle name include them right here. Moreover, you're going to have to submit evidence of it. So do you have like a certified marriage certificate or a certified court order? Make sure you send that in with it and provide a copy as well. You will get the original sent back to you. And if you're not able to actually document that name change, it says right here to go after a DS-82 or a DS-11. Likely you're probably going to have to fill out a new DS-11 and I have a video on how to do that. So go check that out. Down here, they want to know if your identifying information was printed incorrectly. So did your name come back wrong? Did your date of birth come back wrong? The place of birth, your gender? Did anything like that come back incorrectly when you got your passport? If it did, mark yes. Now, if something did come back incorrectly, we're going to mark the box next to what actually was made incorrect. So let's say our first name came back incorrectly, then we would mark an X there, and we would write out exactly how our first name should be written. Let's say we want our, our name should be name. We'll write it out how it should be written. Let's say that our birth date was made incorrectly. Well, we'll mark down next to the birth date and we'll mark down our actual birth date. Let's say that our gender was made incorrectly. We can mark down gender and we can say, we actually wanted to be female, not X. Now, regardless of what change you're making, you still have to provide proof. So if you're changing your name or your birth date, for example, because they were incorrect on your passport, you're gonna need to provide your birth certificate. Down here, they wanna know, was your most recent passport book limited for two years or less? If it was, select yes. Now, if this is true, you're gonna to have to submit evidence of your US citizenship, as well as evidence of your identity and provide copies of those. And if you're trying to renew a limited passport, make sure that it's not yet expired. And if you've lost too many of them, damaged or mutilated too many of them, they likely won't be extended. And you might have to just start with a new DS-11. And make sure you include your US passport book along with this application.